Join us as we observe our Holy Communion service at Grant Hill Missionary Baptist Church every first Sunday during our online church services immediately following Sunday School. To be prepared for the service, you'll need to have some bread and juice for each person participating in the Communion service. God's Word says, For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. 1 Corinthians 11th chapter, 26th verse. Thank you. We look forward to sharing in the Holy Communion service with you. Giving has never been easier at Grant Hill Missionary Baptist Church. Grant Hill offers several options for you to give your tithes and offerings. You can donate with your credit or debit card, your PayPal account, Cash App. You can mail in your donation or drop off your donation in our secure Dropbox. Just visit our website at granthillbaptist.org and click on the Donate button. Follow the on-screen instructions to complete your transaction. If you would like to donate using Cash App, open the Cash App on your mobile device. Enter the cash tag, Grant Hill Baptist, as shown here. Type in a note in the For field, such as tithes or another reason for your donation. Then tap Pay. You can also donate by mailing your donations to Grant Hill Missionary Baptist Church, 5405 Black River Road, Rembert, South Carolina, 29128. Please do not send cash through the mail. Please know that we deeply appreciate your kindness and generosity in giving to our ministry here at Grant Hill Missionary Baptist Church. We continue to honor, praise, and lift the name of God in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Be blessed.
Good morning, everyone. So glad that you decided to join us for another Sunday morning Grand Hill Baptist Sunday School discussion. Before we get into our lesson for the day, we're going to begin with a word of prayer. God, our Heavenly Father, we come before you at this hour. God, thanking you for all your many blessings. Thank you, O oh God, for all that you've done and all that you are. Realizing, O oh God, that you have been good to all of us. God, and that you brought us from a mighty long ways. We thank you, God, for the good times and the not so good. Because we realize, God, that even when we were going through, that you were still there. And God, you were still walking with us and talking with us. And God, you hold our hand and you guide us. So we want to thank you. We ask now, O oh God, that as we go into this discussion, God, that you give us open heart, will and mind, and working hands, that we may do the things that you have commanded us to do. And God, that we may live a life that is pleasing in your sight. We pray, O oh God, for this country and this world. O oh God, that men and women will see you as the head of everything and know that we rely and depend on you and not to our own thoughts and our own ways. God, we thank you now. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. We say amen and amen. Today is Sunday, September 27th. As we continue with our theme, God's Church. And as always, we remind you that our theme for the year is the time is now. So all of these discussions that we're going through and all of these topics, we want you to keep in mind that whatever we're telling you, whatever God is bringing to us through these topics, that you will realize that the time is now. That we can't put it off. We can't say we'll do it later or do it next year. The time is now. So when we talk about God's church and expecting church, and that ties right into the times now because now the things that we're going through, we have to have that expectation that we're going to talk about on today. Our background scripture for today's lesson comes from Thessalonians 1, 9 and 10, Matthew 25, 1 through 13, and Revelation 21, 1 through 14. The key verse, he that overcome shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. This verse is key because the first part says, he that overcometh shall inherit all things. And when we're talking about expectation and an inheritance, it is all about what we expect. And it says that if we, if we overcome, that we will be God. God will be our God, and he shall be my son. Speaking of Jesus Christ, and, and we know that you know when we, when we live the kind of life where we can live expecting, even though we're going through things, it says he that overcometh. Even though we're going through things, we have an expectation of how it's going to come out. The essential question, are you living a life of expectation? Are you preparing to meet your Savior when he returns? And of course, all of these essential questions are, are for you to answer in your own mind and in your own way. But it's something that you need to seriously consider. Are you living a life of expectation? Are you prepared to meet the Savior when he return. And there are certain things, there are certain expectations that you should have and certain things you should be doing in expectation of the coming of Jesus Christ. Our lesson aim, at the end of this lesson, the participant will be able to, number one, live in expectation of Christ's return. Number two, understand that we must not just wait, but we must prepare ourselves for his return. Realize, number three, realize that what we do, realize that we do not know the day nor the hour. Therefore, we have to live our lives as so each day may be our last, because one day it will be. 
Our lesson today is about expectation. I want to ask you a couple of uh, personal questions. What do you expect out of life? When you were a child, what did you expect to be when you grew up? If you're a young adult, has your life met your expectations to this point? If you're an older person, did your expectation change as you got older? All of these are valid questions, but an even better question would be, what are your spiritual expectations and have they changed over the years? If I could pres presume to speak for all believers, I would venture to say that our greatest expectation is to see Jesus when he comes back. When Jesus shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and the trump of God, from 1 Thessalonians 4 and 16. Candace Staten recorded a song that says, When it's all said and done, and my race have been won, that's when your face will be the first face I want to see. Whose face do you want to see? Great expectations for an expectant church. In our exposition on today, we want to cover a few topics. And the first one is great expectation, waiting for Jesus' return. Our discussion, the first part of our discussion is based on 1 Thessalonians in the ninth verse. And here Paul is talking to the church at Thessalonica, and he's complimenting them on their faithfulness. And in verse 9 of that first chapter of 1 Thessalonians, he says to them that you have turned away from idols and served the one true God. And as we probably know, Thessalonica, the Thessalonians were Gentiles. They were not Jews. So they had their own religious belief before Paul started spreading the gospel and Paul came on his missionary journey. They were worshiping our gods. And now Paul is complimenting them on the fact that they have turned away from these idols and they're starting to serve the one true God. And he says that you're waiting for God to return from heaven. When the dead in Christ shall rise, and those that are yet alive will be caught up with them and meet Jesus in the air. We're talking about great expectation. He says that you are waiting for the Son of God to return from heaven. That is the expectation, that was the expectation for the church at Thessalonica, and that should be the expectation for us today. We are waiting for Jesus Christ to return, because we know that it will be the day of Jubilee. And I also said that he is the one, talking about Jesus now, who delivered us from the wrath to come. There's a wrath that's going to come, ladies and gentlemen. We're talking about in the end time. But it says that if you're looking at Thessalonians, this is in the 10th verse, we started with the 9th, but this is in the 10th verse. The first part of that 10th verse, when they're talking about Jesus, it says he delivered us from the wrath to come. And you will notice if you're looking at that verse, you'll notice that deliver is past tense, which tells us that we have already been delivered. So our expectation is that when, we, when, when, we, when that time comes, we're going to go home to be with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ because we have already been delivered. The only thing we have to do is accept the deliverance. The church at Thessalonians was an expecting church. They were waiting for Jesus' return. And if you allow me to insert a song here, it would be the Chicago Mass Choir. And the song says, I pray we all be ready for his return. And that's what all of us, that's what an expected church does. We're praying that we'll be ready. And I said we, that means that we're not just praying for ourselves, but we're praying that we all be ready so that we can all go back to Jesus Christ when he comes. That's our expectation. Next topic, the bridegroom cometh. And we're going to Matthew 25, 1 through 13 very familiar story. Some of us will call it the ten virgins, or five of wise and five of foolish. 
by now you know you know the passage of scripture that I'm talking about. It's a very familiar passage, as I said, and a lot of time it might interject here when it comes to the Bible, and that's the reason why we're told to study the, the word and not read the word. Because when we come to familiar stories like this, there's always something new that you can learn from it. So let's see if we can look at the story on this morning with, with fresh eyes. And Dick and Sam Sanders, the late Dick and Sam Sanders, uh, we used to say when we get to these familiar passages of scripture, that we're gonna try to draw new water from an old well. So that's what we are doing today. So let's see if we can uh, look at this from a dis different perspective. The story of the 10 virgins, Matthew 25, 1 through 13. We're going to focus first on verse 4. Because that tells us that the, the virgin, the 10 virgin, were waiting for the bridegroom to come. And it also tells us in that fourth verse that the wise brought oil in their vessel. They brought extra oil along with the oil that was in their lamp. Keep that in mind because that's going to be a pivotal point to our story later on. Now as we move to uh, verse 5, it talks about the, why they tarry, the bridegroom tarry. In other words, the bridegroom did not come when everybody expected him to come, expected him to come. The bridegroom tarry. It was a little while. They had to wait a while. But it says, while they wait, they fell asleep. Little point here. You may fall asleep physically, because we all get tired. We all need to be refreshed. But, but don't fall asleep spiritually. Stay woke. Because the bridegroom, like I said, tarries. We don't know exactly when the bridegroom is going to come. And then it says in verse 8 and 9 that some were prepared to meet him and some were not. Who was prepared? The one that had the extra oil. Who was not? Those who didn't bring any. They were not prepared to meet the bridegroom. So it's telling us here in the story that some of us are going to be prepared. And I think you know by now who the bridegroom is. And if you don't know by now, look, look, we're going to need to help you out there. The bridegroom is Jesus Christ. Some were prepared to meet him and some were not. I want you, I want you to catch that because we're talking about expectation. And we're talking about being prepared to meet Jesus Christ when he comes. You have expectation, but you have to be prepared. Then as we go on further in the story, verses 9 through 13, it says that after the bridegroom come, came, the bridegroom went in and the door was shut. And those that were not prepared could not go in to the wedding because they were not prepared. And I would imagine that they knocked on the door, they yelled, and they tried to get in, but they could not get in. Awful is the condition of those who are not prepared when Jesus comes back. The door is going to be shut. That means that you can't, you can't hide, you can't run, you can run, but you can't hide. So the, the key thing is now, prepare for him. Prepare for him while you still have time. Takes us back to our, our lesson aim. The second lesson aim of today's lesson was we must understand that we must not just wait, but we must prepare ourselves for his return. We must be prepared for the return of Jesus Christ. And in the, if the last thing from our discussion today, if you go to the book of Revelation 21, 1 through 4, when you talk about expectation, that's the passage of scripture that talks about the new heaven and the new earth. The old heaven and the old earth shall have passed away. All things will become new. And then it says there'll be no more crying. There'll be no more mourning. All of those things have come to pass. And so that will be a, a very joyful time. And again, we're talking about an expectant church and we're talking about the return of Christ. Are you living a life of expectation? We have expectation in this life, here on this earth. Some things we expect to do, we want to do. But the most important expectation 
is when it comes to Jesus Christ and his return. The church at Thessalonians was an inspected church. Are we an inspected church? Thank you so much for joining us on today. Uh, keep on praying. Stay blessed and live in expectation.
them mercy and you allow the grace of God to set on their life. And yet, hallelujah, when you need help, they turn their backs on you. But that's okay because we know for sure that God has made us a promise that I'll never leave you and I'll never forsake you. this morning will be coming from Romans the ninth chapter starting at the 17th verse we're going to be reading from the Christian standard standard version Romans the ninth chapter starting at the 17th verse it says Pharaoh I raise you up for this reason so that I may display my power in you and that my name may be proclaimed in the world in the whole earth. So then, he has mercy on whom he wants to have mercy, and he hardens whom he wants to harden. You will say to me, therefore, why then does he still find fault? For who can resist his will? But who are you, a mere man, to talk back to God? Will what is formed say to the one who formed it? Why did you make me like this? Or has the potter no right over the clay? To make from the same lump one piece of pottery for honor and another for dishonor. And what if God wanted to display his wrath and to make his power known? Endure with much patience objects of wrath prepared for destruction. And what if he did this to make known the riches of his glory on the objects of mercy that he prepared beforehand for glory on us? The ones he also called, not only from the Jews, but also from the Gentiles. As it was said, in Hosea. The 18th verse says, so then he has mercy on whom he wants to have mercy, and he hardens whom he wants to harden. Praise the name of God. Praise the name of God. We want to speak from a, a topic this morning, let your mercies be magnified. Let your mercies be magnified. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you so many, so much for this time and this place, and even the very condition that you have allowed us to be a part of. We know that you sit high and you still look low. And we know that you know all things. And we know that you are able to do all things but fail. And so now we ask that you lead us, that we will be led, and you feed us, that we will be fed. In the mighty name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Come on, let's give God a praise. Let's give God a praise wherever you at this morning. Come on, let's give him a praise. He's worthy to be praised. Even in the midst of our predicament, God is still worthy to be praised. We come this morning, um, and we're asking God to let his mercy be magnified. Because it is only God's mercy and His grace that is going to get us through this time and this season. This week has been a week of sadness and sorrow and turmoil and uproar. Praise the name of God. We 
you're still dealing with what is going on in our society, in our communities, and even in our justice system. And we find out that justice is not always being served. We find out that the law does not always get it right. I am so glad that Jesus said that I come not to destroy the law, but I come that it might be fulfilled. And it's only going to be fulfilled through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And this is why this morning we are asking God to continue to let his mercies be magnified. This afternoon we are asked, many of you, if you are able to come, it has been mandated on and given to my bishop, Bishop Simmons, that we might be able to go to the courthouse in Sumter, South Carolina at four o'clock today, that we might be able to pray a prayer of repentance over the state of South Carolina and even the United States. We're praying for our families, for our homes, for our teachers, for the educational system, we're praying for the doctors and the nurses. We're praying for our community leaders, our governor, mayors. We're praying, praying for our pastors and leaders in the church. And so we ask even if you can come out and be a part of it, we will ask that you come out. Uh, it's 4 p.m. this afternoon courthouse in Sumter, South Carolina. We definitely need God's mercy to be magnified. Last week we talked about being in a cocoon and sometimes the, the, a cocoon of trouble. We talked about where we are today in our world and how God has allowed us to be protected, even in the cocoon. And we might start out as a caterpillar, but after the metamorphosis take place in our life, that we will come forward as a butterfly. But this morning, we are talking from a scripture, a passage of scripture that was written to Rome. To the Romans. And there was a question that Paul had, that the writer had, and there were some statements that he made talking about the potter and the clay. Praise the name of God. This is not the first time you see scriptures talking about the potter and the clay. In the Old Testament, Jeremiah talked about going down to the potter's house. Praise the name of God. Isaiah talked about being clay. And even Hosea talked about God being able to save those that others thought could not be saved. Paul is explaining to them that from the very beginning that God creates us. He knows in his mind and in his heart what he is creating us for. And there are creations that he brings forth with purpose in mind. And there are some that he creates and he allowed to receive honor. And if he would, he would put them on a high shelf. And then there's others that he created and they're on a lower shelf. But he knows from the beginning to the end why you are created. 
Paul asked the question, uh, you know, if you if if you're saying this to me, Paul, then if God knows my beginning from the end, then uh, what does it matter? How can we resist His will? And Paul explained that who is the clean <laughs> to even have the audacity to ask the power. Praise the name of God. Uh, what is happening to the clay? Who is the clay to be disgruntled and dissatisfied with what the potter has done? Will what is formed say to the one who formed it, why did you make me like this? Or has the potter no right over the clay to make from the same lump one piece of pottery for honor and another for dishonor? This is a question that came up. But Paul said that doesn't God have the right to have mercy on whom he wants to have mercy on? Oh, I praise the name of God. Now that question might not seem like a good question if you have not lived in this world long enough. But if you lived in this world long enough, you realize that God can have mercy and grace on many of us, on you and on me. But if it was left up to people, people would have mercy on who they want to have mercy on, and grace who they want to have grace on, and others they wouldn't mind if they're destroyed. As you can see in our everyday living that some of us don't have value like others have value. As simply as and not as, as deep as going past the color of our skin. You mean to tell me because I have been born with melanin in my skin that I can be treated different. Not because of my heart or my mind or my spirit. Not because of my integrity or my character. But you treat me different just because I look different. Oh, praise the name of God. Uh, and many might ask, uh, how is this so? But it was explained even in the scriptures that sometimes God allows the Pharaoh of this world to rise up and he would seem as though that he has power and he will believe that he has power. But it is only that God allowed the Pharaoh of this world to rise up only to show God's glory in the end. As a matter of fact, uh, uh, when we find out that uh, if you go up without God, you're soon going to come down. Uh, as a matter of fact, the Bible declares that if you exalt yourself, uh, he will bring you a base. Uh, but if you humble yourself, uh, he will exalt you. Uh, and I found out that we have to allow God to let his mercies be magnified. Uh, and I know that everybody don't want you to have mercy in your life. Uh, everybody don't want you to have grace in your life. Uh, as a matter of fact, some people, uh, praise the name of God, if it was up to them, they would take all the mercy for themselves. Uh, and they would take all the grace for themselves. Uh, but I'm so glad that I have the word of God in front of me. Uh, that I realize that even though I walk through the valley 
to the shadow of death. Huh? There's no need for me to fear no evil. Huh? Oh, praise the name of God. Huh? Hallelujah. And I realize that, that, that his grace and his mercy huh, will follow me all the days of my life. Huh? Oh, praise the name of God. Huh? But I also know that huh, the Pharaohs will raise up and Pharaohs are not only in our government. Huh? Pharaohs are not only in our communities. Huh? Pharaohs can be in your family. Huh? Pharaohs can be in your church. Huh? Oh, praise. Pharaohs can be in your place of business and in your place of work. Huh? Praise the name of God. There's always someone huh, trying to rise up and be in control. Uh, when we know for a fact that God is in control. Uh, and when it seems as though God is not doing anything. Uh, I need you to understand that God will, will be done. Uh, praise the name of God. Uh, God has enough patience in himself. Uh, and as a matter of fact, when we get downloaded uh, with the patience of God, uh, we won't let certain things worry us. Uh, oh, praise the name of God. Uh, we won't let certain things that are said, uh, hallelujah, set us back. Uh, I need you to understand uh, that many people uh, will smile in your face. Uh, I believe it was the old days that said it. Uh, they'll smile in your face. Uh, hallelujah. Uh, but they're just backstabbers. Uh, oh, praise the name of God. Uh, hallelujah. Now I'm the kind of person uh, I would love for me, a man, to be a man uh, and a woman to be a woman. Uh, and if you got something to say, uh, you ought to say it. Hallelujah. To whoever you got to say it to. Uh, Praise the name of God. Huh. But I found out that that's not how this world works. Huh. Oh, praise the name of God. I've been living long enough huh, till I have laid my head in the lap of the lion. Huh. And I have given out my secrets. Huh. Oh, praise the name of God. Only for the lion to cut my locks. Huh. Hallelujah. And try to destroy me. Huh. Oh, praise the name of God. And many of you huh, have tried and gone through uh, a lot of situations and circumstances. Uh, you will put people on pedestals uh, and you will trust those uh, that could not be trusted. Uh, oh, praise the name of God. Uh, you've given them mercy and you've allowed the grace of God uh, to settle on their life. Uh, and yet, hallelujah, uh, when you need help, uh, they turn their backs on you. Uh, but that okay huh? because we know for sure huh? that God has made us a promise huh? that I'll never leave you huh? and I'll never forsake you huh? hallelujah huh? and I'll be with you until all times huh? hallelujah huh? and so therefore when you find out that we are only the clay huh? and God is the power huh? hallelujah I told you last week huh? That we got to let the mind that be in Christ uh, also be in us. Uh, so as a matter of fact, if I'm just the clay, uh, if I ask God, uh, what is it that you want to do with me? Uh, what shelf do you want to put me on? Uh, hallelujah. Uh, I don't have to be on display. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, if you want me behind the scene, uh, I'll just be behind the scene. Uh, as long as you get the glory of God. But if you want to put me on display, that's fine too. As long as you get the glory. If you want me to be under the radar, I'll be under the radar. Just as long as you get the glory. But if you want to be me, put me up front. I praise the name of God. I'll be up front. But wherever you say God, that's where I want to be. As a matter of fact, I just need you to order my steps, God. In your word. And hallelujah, just continue to let your mercies be magnified. Not only in my life, but in others' life. Not only in my church, 
but in others' church. Not only in my home, but in others' home. Not only in my community, but in others' community. Oh God, I'm not coming like I got it going on. I'm not coming like I'm perfect. I'm not coming like I don't sin. For the Bible says that everyone sin and fall short of the glory of God. Hallelujah. But I come because I know that you created me. And I found out that you got a plan and you got a plan that we prosper. Hallelujah. You got a plan. Hallelujah. That we rise up. That we stand up. Hallelujah. You got a plan. That we go through whatever storm might come our way. But you are going to allow that your mercies be magnified. As a matter of fact, I'm seeing you draw it all out. Oh, praise the name of God. I can see God in the heavens. Hallelujah. Laying out the canvas. Oh, praise the name of God. And he's drawing a masterpiece in each and every one of you. You might think that you are going through these trials that they might take you out. You might think that you're going through these tribulations that they might put you down. You might think that you're going through this turmoil. Hallelujah. That you might give up. But I came by to tell you when you are in the storms of life, that is only when God's mercy is being magnified. As a matter of fact, that there are some people, uh, they are comfortable uh, in the cocoon. Uh, there are some people uh, comfortable uh, in their life right now. Uh, they're not worried about uh, anybody else. Uh, they're selfish uh, and they just want to take care uh, of themselves. Uh, but I came by to tell you, uh, I need God uh, to let his mercy be magnified. Uh, because if you are not praying for no one else, I'm so glad that God can still hear the cry of those that are praying. I'm so glad that God can still hear the cry of those that are fasting. I'm so glad that God can still hear the cry of those that are worried, that have a burden on their life for other people. I'll pray the name of God that God rests on you will destroy the very yoke of the enemy. Oh yes he will. I pray the name of God. And I came by to tell you that you ought to be saying right now let your mercy be magnified. As a matter of fact take a little bit of time right now. Wherever you are just go ahead and cry out let your mercy be magnified. Let your mercies be magnified. Magnify your mercies on me. Magnify your mercies on us. Oh Lord, I need you to go to the schools and magnify your mercy. I need you to go to the jobs and magnify your mercies. I need you to go to the church, whether it's inside or outside in the parking lot or within the whole wall. I need you to magnify your mercy. I need you to walk down the avenues of my mind and magnify your mercy. I need you to walk down the corridor of my heart and magnify your mercy. I praise the name of God. Hallelujah. And I know right now that the enemy is coming and saying, well, God is not listening to you. You can pray all you want. 
You can fast all you want. You can cry out all you want. But look at your life. You are going down. But I came by to tell you, that's the enemy's job. I'll pray in the name of God. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But God came that you might have everlasting life. And I came by to tell you, as a matter of fact, he said, I don't have mercy on who I want to have mercy on. Ain't no devil in hell going to stop me from hallelujah blessing your life. Don't you throw in the towel. I'll pray in the name of God. But you might as well get that towel and wave it like it's a flag of victory. I'll pray in the name of God. It's a flag of victory. I'll pray in the name of God. Oh, hallelujah. As a matter of fact, you can't have victory. Hallelujah. Not through God until you surrender all. You got to surrender all to God. Hallelujah. That he might get the glory out of our life. Listen to me. I'll pray in the name of God because there are some that want to shut you down. There are some that want your mouth shut. There are some that will say, be quiet. There are some say, don't take all of that. There are some that say, why are you worshiping in a time like this? God has closed heaven and he's forgot all about y'all. I'll pray in the name of God. But I'm so glad we got the word of God. We got stories in the book that we can apply to our life every day as we wake up ten toes down and look into the sun. I got a word from the Lord. And I stopped by Hallelujah, in a small city, hallelujah, on the other side of the water, I'll pray in the name of God, set me down about two, three thousand years ago, I'll pray in the name of God, I see a man, his name, they call him Blind Barnabas, I'll pray in the name of God, yes he's there, and he can't see but he heard that a man named Jesus was coming through town. I pray the name of God. The Bible says that we have faith because we hear the word of God. I pray the name of God. Blind by mess, he heard that Jesus was coming through. He heard that Jesus could make the blind see, could make the dumb talk, could make the deaf hear, and could make the lame walk. I pray the name of God. As a matter of fact, he heard that he could even raise the dead. Pray the name of God. Somebody say, when Jesus came in the town, blind Bartimaeus began to cry out, have mercy on us, Lord. Hallelujah. But there were people that were able to see. There were people that were not blind. Told Bartimaeus, why don't you hush your mouth? Why don't you be quiet? I'll pray the name of God. But it does not sound like right. Today, there are people uh, that's not having any problems, uh, but yet they're telling you uh, how to praise the Lord. Uh, let they, yet they're telling you uh, how you can worship. Uh, yet they're telling you uh, where to praise the Lord. Uh, yet they're telling you where to worship. Uh, the devil is a lie. Uh, I pray the name of God. Uh, you don't see uh, what I need to see. Uh, if I'm blind, uh, I need my and I need God to give me my sight. Hallelujah. If I'm walking in darkness, I need some light. I pray the name of God. And the Bible says, by man would not shut his mouth. He said, have mercy on me, son of David. Have mercy on me, Lord. And I came by to tell you, let
mercy be magnified. Let his mercy be magnified on your life. No matter what you are going through, let his mercy be magnified on your life. As a matter of fact, magnify the Lord with me. Can anybody magnify the Lord with me? Somebody tell them hallelujah right now. Somebody tell them praise the Lord right now. Somebody look at your storm and tell your storm you can back up because I got a God on my side. And he's speaking to the storm and he's saying peace, be still. I pray in the name of God. I love a God that can stop every trouble that comes your way. I love a God that can bring down mountains that see the way. I love a God that can be a bridge across troubled waters. I love a God that say I am that I am. I'm the bread of life. Hallelujah. Whatever you need, God got it. Whatever you want, God got it. I pray in the name of God. Let your mercy be magnified. Be magnified. I am the clay. You are the potter. I pray in the name of God. Make me, mold me, however you want me to be. I pray in the name of God. You see, in you I live, in you I move, and in you I have my being. I pray in the name of God. Why am I here to magnify the name of God? I pray in the name of God. May he be magnified as El Shaddai. May he be magnified as Jehovah Jireh, as Jehovah Nisi, as Jehovah Shalom. I pray in the name of God. As Jehovah Tiskanu, as Jehovah Nisi, pray in the name of God. He is my all in all. I can't do anything without him. Let your mercy be magnified. Let your mercies be magnified. Hallelujah. This morning, God is going to magnify. He wants to magnify his mercy on your life. As a matter of fact, the minute you know that you are walking in his grace and in his mercy. Hallelujah. The grace of God. God's riches at Christ's expense. Praise the name of God. He has paid the price for all of us. Hallelujah. There's no one better than the other. Hallelujah. There's no one greater than the other. It is only when we are following the purpose of God. Whatever God purposed us to do. Whatever he created us to do. This is what gives God glory out of our life. There are many of you. You want to be someone else. Or you want to be in the place of someone else. That's not what God created you for. He great created you to be who you are and to be the best you that you can be. Everyone don't have the same capabilities. Everyone don't have the same gifts and the same talents. You have to use what God has given you. Praise the name of God. And one thing that God has given us is salvation. Hallelujah. We have to receive salvation from him. He has redeemed us. He has brought us back to God. He no longer sees the sin that we were covered in, but we are covered by the blood. So this morning, I would say to you, allow God's mercy to be magnified in your life. If you are out there and you are looking on us today, and you do not know him as your personal savior. Please allow God to come in your life. Come in your, to your life. Thank you, Jesus. If you desire to have him come into your life, just pray this prayer with me very quickly this morning. Lord Jesus, I thank you. And I believe in you. And I believe that you gave your life. That we might have life and we might have it more abundantly. I receive you today as my personal Savior. I confess it with my mouth and I believe it in my heart that you are, that 
you are God, that you are the Savior of the world. I receive you today. I praise the name of God. If you pray that prayer with me, I need you to find you a Bible-based church. Praise the name of God. Find someone that will help you build, that will encourage you, that you might grow in God and grow in the scriptures of the word of God. God will even send someone your way if you have prayed this prayer this morning. And you will know that God is magnifying his mercies in your life as we speak. Praise the name of God. Until next time, be blessed. Hotel.